Hello, my dear friends. Rabbi Moshe Hauer, who is the newly appointed executive vice president of the Orthodox Union, spoke today on Thanksgiving about the Thanksgiving holiday. When I was in school as a child, we learned about Thanksgiving and we were told or we were taught that Thanksgiving was initiated by the pilgrims when they, in, 18, in 1621, when they celebrated the first year that they had settled in America. I did not know that at that point of time, it was not an official holiday and different states celebrated Thanksgiving at different times until finally in 1863, President Abraham Lincoln declared Thanksgiving a national holiday on the same date for the entire country. In his proclamation, Abraham Lincoln wrote an amazing letter, which was quoted by Rabbi Hauer. And I, I wanna share with you because I was just blown away by the letter. The letter says as follows, the year that, uh, a, a proclamation, the year that is drawing towards its close has been filled with blessings of fruitful fields and healthful skies. Let's bear in mind, this is 1863. It's the middle of the Civil War. So he's saying that it's been a, a year of blessings. In the midst of a civil war of unequaled magnitude and severity, peace has been preserved with all nations, order has been maintained, the laws have been respected and obeyed, and harmony has prevailed everywhere except in the theater of military conflict. In other words, it's been a great year the only place where there's a problem is in the battlefield, but otherwise everything is just fantastic. Needful diversions of wealth and of strength from the fields of peaceful industry to the national defense have not arrested the plow, or as in spite of the fact that they had to divert resources to the, uh, to the battlefront, but it has not stopped the plow from plowing, the shuttle or the ship, the ax has enlarged the borders of the settlements and the mines, as well of, as of iron and coal, as of precious metals have yielded even more abundantly than heretofore. Population has steadily increased. No human counsel hath devised nor hath any mortal hand worked out these great things. They are the gracious gifts of the most high God who, while dealing with us in anger for our sins, hath nonetheless remembered mercy. It has seemed to me fit and proper that they should be solemnly, re re reverently, and gracious gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and one voice by the whole American people. I therefore do invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States to observe the last Thursday of November as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our benefactor, Father, who dwelleth in the heavens. Oh, it's an amazing proclamation because here it's the middle of the Civil War and you would have thought that that's not the right time to celebrate Thanksgiving. And yet Abraham Lincoln says that aside from the fact that there's a, you know, a little bit of a problem going on and people are, are fighting and killing each other, but there's so many things that we have to be appreciative of uh, and, and we should therefore celebrate Thanksgiving. Now I did a little bit more research and it turns out that although Abraham Lincoln made the proclamation, but it was a letter that was written for him by his Secretary of State, who was William Seward. I thought maybe William Seward is Jewish because there's such strong Jewish values here of being able to see the good and having a positive outlook and to be appreciative even in the face of things that are not uh, that are in the time of crisis. But I, as far as I could tell, William Seward was not Jewish, but he did seem to have a strong affiliation and connection with the Jewish people. In 1871, Stewart made a, a special trip, uh, was the first time ever by a Secretary of State to the city of Jerusalem, and he visited the vi Jewish community there and he kept a diary. He went to the Kosel, to the Kotel, and Friday evening he went to the Churva Synagogue in Yerushalayim, and in fact the president of the shul invited him to come and sit in the, in the very front of the synagogue out of a respect, and he, and he uh, describes the moving experience that he had during that visit. So apparently there was some connection between Seward and the, and the uh, Jewish community. There weren't an awful lot of Jews in America at that time, but still he seemed to have some attraction. In any event, it's a, this letter is so amazing that in the middle of the Civil War, uh, it, it could be written by Seward and delivered by Abraham Lincoln that 
now's the time that we have to celebrate Thanksgiving. And what I think you could extract from this is that there's always room for appreciation. The people tend not to be appreciative because things are not perfect. The Chavos Lvava says the people do not have Hakar Zatov because there's always something that they're missing. They're, they're always waiting to, to reach the next level of, uh, of prosperity or satisfaction or have a promotion or, there, or there's problems that are unresolved and therefore people are never satisfied and never appreciative. And Hakar Satov in this world, there's never a perfect situation. There's always something that's not perfect. And Hakar Satov which is what Thanksgiving is, requires that a person should see the good for the good. And even though there's unresolved issues, nonetheless, a person uh, should be appreciative for the, for the blessings that we have from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And it's a very apropos thought for this year. We are in the midst, still in the midst of the pandemic. Hopefully the vaccine will be coming soon. But in the meantime, it's been a long time that we've been dealing with the with the pandemic with COVID, a lot of people have become ill many people have passed away people's businesses have been terribly affected socially the schools so many different areas of life have been impacted and this was actually the, the message that rabbi howard was delivering based on on, on the letter that the, uh, from abraham when he referenced the letter from abraham lincoln you have to be able to appreciate the good in spite of everything else that's taking place. I want to use this as a springboard to interpret a Pasuk in this week's Parsha. The, the Torah talks about the names that the, uh, of the Shvatim when they were born, the 12 tribes, and Leah named her fourth child Yehuda, which uh, the, she said, Alkain, uh, she said, this time I'm going to thank Hashem and therefore I can curse my Yehuda. Therefore she called him Yehuda. This Pasuk, the fact that the Parsha speaks about Yehuda, the week of Thanksgiving, it's not, it, it, it's really significant. It's not a, nothing is ever a coincidence. I heard Rabbi Lowe deliver a talk on this as well. So it, it, the there is a difficulty here. This was a question that Rabbi Lowe in fact asked in, uh, when he spoke or in his article. Why? Why did Leah wait till the fourth child to, to to give the name Yehuda, which means that I'm appreciative? Oh, there's Hashem. I was going to show thanks to Hashem. Why didn't well, she have four, three kids prior to that? What children? Why didn't she express Hoda at that at that at those points of time? So Rashi addresses this question. Rashi says that she knew that each one of the um, there were four four wives that were married to the Avos. Each one deserved to have. Three, there were going to be 12 Shvatim, each one, she knew through prophecy, each one was going to have three, deserved to have three children. She had four, so she, he received a greater measure than she uh, deserved. She had, yosemichalki. I received more than my lot, Rashi says. And therefore, now it's appropriate to give Hoda. I want to offer a, an alternative shot, one that's permitted to do so. I would like to say the following. The question is, why didn't Leah express Akar Satov earlier? She had three wonderful children. Why wasn't she appreciative? So my thinking is that Leah, the three names that she gave to her first three children all reflected the fact that she recognized that she was not loved by Yaakov. The Chumash says that, by, by, that Yaakov uh, loved uh, Rachel, and Leah was snua. She was despised. Some say the Ramban has two different explanations. One explanation is that compared to Rachel, she, Leah was snua. She, she would, it wasn't that Yaakov hated her, but the other explanation of the Ramban is that Yaakov had kindness on Leah. He, 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 he was upset with Leah throughout his life because Leah deceived him. Leah, uh, Lavan, when Lavan switched Leah for Rachel, and, and uh, Rachel gave over the simanim, the, the signs to, uh, to Leah, and Yaakov spent that night with Leah, and he d discovered that she's Leah first in the morning. Now, she could have told Yaakov who she, what her real identity is. She did not do so, and therefore Yaakov always bared a grudge, a grudge against Leah. And therefore, she was a snua. She was, there was a certain level of, 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 of uh, mistrust or animosity 
that existed between Yaakov and Leah. And Leah was obviously very cognizant of it because each of the names for the first three children have to do with her relationship with Yaakov Avinu. And she was hoping that as she gave birth to children, that would compensate and that, and that would uh, change the nature of the relationship. So the first son was Reuven. So she said, why Reuven? Ki amr ki ra Hashem ba'anyi. God has seen my uh, poverty, that her poverty is that she, um, or the, I see the article says, God has discerned my humil humiliation. Ki yavani Now, because I gave birth to a son, now, now Yaakov is going to love me. That was the first son. Uh, apparently, that her hope did not materialize because when the second son was born, so she called him Shimon. Why? God has heard that I am despised. So he gave me another child to again to hopefully win over Yaakov. What happens the third time? Maybe this time my husband will be more attached to me. I gave him, after all, I'm the mother of three children. But once again, apparently, it, it, was, it did not come to fruition what her hope was. So what I would suggest is that the fourth time when she, when she names her son Yehuda, the reason for that, she says, This time I'm going to thank Hashem. This time in contrast to the other three times. Meaning to say that Leah found it difficult to be appreciative of having children because even though she had children, but ya she was not the favorite of Yaakov. At best, she was second fiddle, or at worst, she was despised. So she, how could she be appreciative of, of, of the fact that she has children when, she, when, when her relationship with her husband is tainted? When it came the fourth child, and she saw that each time she was hoping, I'll have another child, and this will change the, the dynamics, and another child, and it, 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 it didn't help at all. So this time, hapam means that Leah said, this time I'm going to stop looking at the things that I don't have. I'm going to stop focusing on the things that are imperfect, that are preventing me from having a sense of appreciation. Hapam, even though there's still this, this hostility or resentment between my husband and myself. Nonetheless, that's what it means, hapam. Nonetheless, odas Hashem. So it's not, Rashi learns hapam odas Hashem is because, because I had another child, that's why I'm going to thank Hashem. My alternative explanation is, and of course Rashi's explanation is better than mine, but my alternative explanation is hapam means this time I'm going to do it differently. I'm not going to do the same as I have done in other times. You find hapam in, in a similar sense in, uh, in the Parsha Balak when Bilaam tries to curse the Jewish people and each time he goes to curse them, God forces him to give them a bracha. So the Chumash says that finally, Vilohalach, I think this was the fourth time, Vilohalach hapam hapam, Bilaam did not go like he had gone Every, all the previous times because he saw that God wanted to bless the Jewish people so he didn't go kapam he didn't go like the previous times that means to say he re, he let go of his preconceived notions or his desire or his ambition to, to curse the Jewish people and he said you know what God doesn't want it I'm, I'm just I'm going to do what God wants not what I want kapam bapam he didn't go kapam bapam so it's the same word pam bapam it means Previous times, he says, I, 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 I'm going to let go of how, what things were in previous times. Batomer hapam, Bugleya said, Batomer hapam, this time, you need to say, this time it's going to be different. The other times, I should have had appreciation, but I didn't because things were, were still unresolved. Now I'm going to have appreciation, even though things are, are not perfect. And the I think that the, the message of um, of Abraham Lincoln's letter, I, I, it blew me away because it's such a, uh, you know, I would have thought that it would be written by, uh, by, by a rabbi or somebody of that sort. It, it shows such a um, mature approach that even though things are not perfect, and, and it's not just that it wasn't perfect, this is the middle of the Civil War. It was a horrific time. Still, there was an appreciation that uh, that William Stewart 
uh, Seward had when he wrote the letter and Abraham Lincoln obviously embraced it. And that was to appreciate, you have to appreciate your blessings even though things are not perfect. And we, as we go through life, we often are the same, uh, same pattern of behavior as Leah. That, you know, the, the right now I, I, I'm, I I'm not so appreciative because I, have, I don't have a job yet. Or right now I don't have a shidduch. Or, or right now I'm having trouble at work. Or right now I don't have enough money. Or right now I have a, an health, a health issue. And so it goes throughout a person's life. A person could live to be 100 years old and never have a moment's appreciation to Kaddish Baruch Because that's the nature of life. There's always something wrong. There's always something missing. There's always something that could be fixed. And, and, and if you're waiting till it gets fixed, nothing is ever going to get fixed completely. Life, or maybe one problem will be fixed, but some other problem will arise. Life is not perfect. And, and it's a very powerful lesson for us as well. During this period of COVID, even though things are really very, very difficult, but you know, things could have been far worse when they had the, 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 uh, the flu, uh, the Spanish flu in, in 1918. Things were far worse. People were dying in, in uh, there were millions of people were, were dying and, 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 and the, that there was so little that they were able to do pre to prevent it. And okay, it is terrible. The, every single loss of life is terrible. But it, we're still, we're living in our homes. Most of us still have parnasa. We have food to eat. We're able to, to leave our homes. We're able to go outside. Okay, we have to wear our masks. We have to be careful. We have to practice social distancing. But there is so much to be appreciative of. Thanksgiving is is not a Jewish holiday. It's a it's a, it, and it's it's not only an American holiday, but it's practiced in many different cultures around the world, which shows that Hakar Satov appreciation is a a universal um, characteristic of of the human condition that people feel a sense of appreciation. Unfortunately, even though that's true, when it comes to our relationship with the Kaddish Baruch Hu, very often, or perhaps almost all, almost all the time, we don't connect the, the what we have to the to the giver of these of, uh, of the bounty that we are experiencing. We don't connect it to our Kaddish Baruch Hu. I'm sure there's a lot of people. I'm, I don't mean to criticize anybody, but many people are sitting down today and having a turkey dinner. I wonder how many of them really feel a tremendous sense of Hakar Satov to our Kaddish Baruch Hu for the blessings that. He has given us, and we are called. The Jews are called Yehudim, and that's because the the Chedush Rim says, the Ger Rebbe says, is that the the Jews always have appreciation. They always feel that they've received more than they deserve. Just like Rashi's explanation of Yehuda is because it, now she felt she received more than she deserved. A Jew always feels that we have more than we deserve. So even when things are are perhaps difficult, and the, and 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 that's, again, that's the nature of life. There's always something that comes short. Nonetheless, we always have to have tremendous hakar for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, for all the good that He has bestowed upon us.